All right, guys, so here's the review of the Houtman Pilbara. This is a micro brand based in Australia. They've actually taken some design cues and stuff from the surroundings, but we'll get into that as we get into the review. Full disclosure, I've been setting this for review, been trying it out. Don't get to keep it, it's just a loan piece, so you've got to send it back or send it to the next reviewer. Not entirely sure which at the moment, but anyway, you know the score. So, question is, is it going to be interesting enough for you to want to pick one up? Or do you just want to just see something a little bit different? Because there is a few little bits with this, which are quite interesting. So let's get down to it, show you what they are and find out. So here's the nice watch roll you'll get it in. I do quite like this. Nice, interesting color as well. Something a little bit different. And obviously it's practical as well. So you can use it for like carrying around a few watches at once. Far more useful than a box. And then we've got the branding in there. So just open this up. The only thing I've got in here because it's a review piece is the watch, nothing else. But I think you do actually get another strap with this. I think it might be a leather one or a rubber one or something. If I find out, I'll leave that on screen. And here's the watch itself. So you can probably tell straight away this style something a little bit different. So let's get a zoom in and look at that. So they call this their rock dial. And that's because it's actually inspired by the area, which is the name of the watch, the Pilbara. So the Pilbara Rock. And I do like that they've done that. It just helps differentiate it a bit. Something a little bit different with it being from Australia. Also, another thing that's a little bit different is that text. So the branding, if you can see it there, is actually on the crystal, not on the dial. Which I do quite like. Something I've definitely not seen before. I think that's just with this particular dial version though. Obviously they couldn't really write it on that dial, it look a little bit funny. But I think with the other ones, the more standard dial colours, which don't have that texture, they just have it on the dial. But I do like that. It was one of the reasons I wanted to check this one out, just something a bit different. So with the rest of the dial, you can see that we've got the indices which are actually integrated into that chapter ring, and they're all slightly raised above the rest of the dial. And then we've got the hands which kind of match. Same kind of style as the indices. Nice black ones so they stand out against that dial. Now, to quickly zoom back out and we'll talk about the rest of this. So with the bezel, we've got 120 click, unidirectional, and it's actually rock solid. And it is actually a ceramic insert as well, I think. And it lines up perfectly. No issues there. No play at all either is good and then we've got a fairly simple case finishing it's mainly brushed some nice polished chamfered edges though which just help break it up a bit and it's nicely done same with the bracelet nicely finished that's fully brushed and then with the clasp we've actually got the branding on there we've got a nice chamfered edge on that as well so does feel nice, nicely finished, double pushes, milled clasp. Now with the case back, this is pretty cool as well. So apparently this dog on the back here is a red dog, which is apparently quite a famous dog around the Pilbara area. I'll leave some information on screen if you want to check that out. Again, just something a little bit interesting, something to differentiate it, but a character. Another thing which does that quite well is the quick release bracelet. Not something you see a lot often in bracelets, and it is actually quite easy to do as well. Easy to get hold of. Not recessed like a previous one that I tried from another brand. So I do like that. And then we've just got the usual spec sheet around the outside. So, Helpman watches, stainless steel, sapphire crystal. It's 100 meter water resistant and automatic. Seeing as we're talking about it, let's quickly test out that crystal. Using the trusty diamond selector too. And yep, we have got sapphire crystal, so that's always good. So now let's quickly go on to the measurements on this one. 
We've got a thickness of 11.5, diameter of 41, lug width of 22. Now with the important lug to lug, we have actually got completely flush links, which is good, so it drops straight down, no protrusion there. So the lug to lug is 49 mil. So not too bad dimensions wise, slightly larger. So if you've got a smaller wrist, it's probably not going to be one for you, but it's not a massive one. So before I show you what it's like on wrist, let's quickly see what the loom's like on this. So you can see we've got quite a bit there already, but let's charge it up, give it a proper chance. And there we go. So, really nice. We've got a fully lean bezel. And then we've got that BGW9. So we've got that ice blue colour. And it is nicely evenly applied. No patchiness at all. And it lasts a decent amount of time as well. The indices do fade slightly quicker than the hands and the bezel. But that's not too big a deal. The main thing is that the hands hang on. But it stays at this kind of level now, pretty good amount of time. As I say, the indices fade slightly, but not too much. So pretty good loom. Then we've also got the loomed crown as well, which is a nice touch. With the logo there. Well, I'm not really sure if it's a logo, what it is exactly. Cause I don't know if they have a logo, but it looks good either way. So when it comes to the movement in this, it's got the Miota 9039, which is the no date version of the 9015. So I'll quickly show you that in action. So we've got screw down crown, nice and grippy. And then we don't have a ghost date position because there's the specific no date version. So pull it out once, second hand stops, we've got hacking, and then obviously we can just change the time. And then pop it back in, second hand re-engages. And then we've got that nice smooth sweep of that second hand, because it's a high beat movement. And then screw it back in. No issues with that at all. Really smooth, really nice to screw in. No grittiness. Oh, forgot to mention before as well. With the clasp, we've got two levels of micro adjust, and we've also got screw links as well. So now I'll show you what it's like on wrist, and then we'll wrap this up. So this is what it looks like on my seven inch wrist. And I think it does wear really nicely. And I do really like that dial. It's just something a bit different. Something a little bit cool. And then that text on the actual crystal as well. I do quite like that too. Again, something a little bit different. If I had any issues, I would probably say they could maybe do with like one or two more levels of micro adjust maybe. I mean, just the two isn't ideal. But they do have a couple of half lengths as well. So it's not too bad. But overall, I do really like it. So you're probably wondering how much they are. So in Australian dollars, it's 549. That works out to about 407 US dollars, 301 pounds or 350 euros. So given the specs you're getting, I don't think it's too bad. It's a pretty good price, especially if you just want something a little bit different. Because I've never seen a dial like that before. But... Links are down in the description as always if you do want to check it out. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.